Hi, and welcome to episode number two of Not Your Average Breakdown. I'm Claudia. And I'm Alex. And we're oh. just bringing our conversations about various topics to people who may, just like me, not immerse themselves in the latest and greatest topics, uh, what's going on in the news. That's all right. That's why they have me. <laughs> That's why we all have you, Alex. And now I'm bringing you to the public. Oh, man. The pressure is on because I didn't have time to make my martini. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh man, we're now we're messing with fate here. Uh, yep. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna power through it, and I think you can do it. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been super nervous about this topic all day. Same. Uh, I feel like this is as sensitive as it's gonna get on this podcast, just because of the nature of the topic and because it's still you know currently ongoing. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So you know another story. Um, Obviously, um, this was a organic situation with Alex and I, where I had seen on Instagram the morning that after uh, Hamas had gone into Israel and started just chaos, and I immediately sent Alex the link of what I had seen and asked her to do what she does best and that is break this situation down i knew she would know about it i knew it uh and uh clearly she did and um i buckled up and she began telling me the story of this situation and it has not left me since so alex you know let's start at the beginning how did this even start Okay, so that was a great introduction. I was going to say this topic was actually the reason why we decided to record the podcast in the first place, because we do get into these discussions naturally, you know, when we're just hanging out or even on the phone. Um, So when you brought this topic to me a few weeks ago, we briefly discussed it. I I had some information, but obviously since there is a lot more that came to surface, so the video that you sent me um, on Instagram was the day of the attack, which was October 7, uh, 2023, that happened in Israel, and it was perpetrated by uh, Hamas, which is a Palestinian uh, militant group or a terrorist organization uh, designated as such by the United States and several other countries, including European Union. Um, they perpetrated a surprise attack on Israel, launching thousands of rockets into Israel and crossing the border and attacking a music festival that was happening in Israel. And they killed around 1,300 civilians, of Israeli civilians, uh, and 250 people hostage. And they still hold them hostage. Um, over the last couple of days, they released some, uh, but they're still holding, you know, a couple of hundreds of people. Um, and so this came as a shock, you know, to international community, to people all around the globe, because it was just um, unexpected. And surprisingly enough, this also came as a shock to the Israel Uh, Israeli people because as much of a conflict that they have with Palestine uh, going on they were not expecting to have an attack of this scale you know happen and it I mean that's what I was wondering because I was like was there this underlying tension between the two that was going on that just you know a lot of the world wasn't privy to or maybe they have been I mean I haven't obviously been following this um, and you know much more than I Uh, But, you know, was there this tension there to begin with? Yes, there was definitely tension and there has been tension happening there for, you know, several decades, almost 80 years um, at this point. And they certainly had their conflicts and attacks happening um, over even the last few years, Uh, but definitely not to this scale. This attack that happened on October 7th was the largest 
civilian casualties of Israeli people um, besides Holocaust. So that is a a devastating statistic because, yeah. you know, Jewish people were prosecuted heavily during World War II. And so to compare that attack, you know, a few weeks ago to Holocaust, it, it's it's, you know, really devastating. Yeah, I mean, people are still dealing with that generational trauma from back then, you know, and now this, I mean, they just can't catch a break. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of um, people who survived Holocaust, they moved to Israel um, once they uh, were able to because Israel was established, you know, after World War Two. And um, I'm going to get into that uh, shortly. So, you know, some people have relatives or survived Holocaust themselves. And now they experience this, you know, second largest attack on, yeah. on Jewish people uh, in this area. And that's, so that's pretty awful. I am going to try to divide this topic into two main areas because the topic is just so big that I cannot cover this. And, you know, we're trying to keep this podcast less than an hour and, you know, this can be a whole series. Um, so I am dividing this into two main topics. One is going to be, you know, the ancient land and who was there first, because that seems to be the problem of, of this conflict and the dispute over the land. Um, and then I'm going to go over the last 80 years of the conflict, because that is really what brings us here and what is happening right now in that area. You're basically saying we're going to we're going to take a look at the beginning and then jump forward to where we are now. Yes, I feel okay. like that is the best assessment um, and the way forward. I when I was fact checking um, some of these things, you know, I just found myself going down a rabbit hole and I was so overwhelmed by data that I had to prioritize and see, you know, how I can present this topic to you and to our listeners that they can, you know, easily understand what is happening and very and how to objectively present it because the topic is very sensitive in nature. And, you know, everybody has an opinion and everybody should have an opinion. But I feel like the sides are so polarized. And there is just so much misinformation going around that, you know, fact checking even became a, a problem and an obstacle for me. So I am going to try to stick to the facts. And we're going to go from there. The facts are still interesting. And you know, that's what I love about our conversations is that you don't try to sway my opinion about anything. It's just literally telling me what you know, uh, whether it's historical, uh, factual, all those things. Um, it's not about you trying to bias me in any way. Um, and because I think you're a pretty open minded indiv individual yourself. So you enjoy having these conversations with people that can speak to both sides. So you know, this is clearly just as we always say a conversation amongst friends, uh, and just trying to learn. Um, so actually, when we were having this actual conversation, I thought some of the most interesting parts obviously was how this all started, where it began. Uh, well, thank you for that. I definitely I tried to do my research. Um, like you said, this is just a, a conversation, you know, between two friends. Uh, we're not a news outlet. That's my first disclaimer. And my second disclaimer is I try to fact check pretty much everything that I'm going to discuss here today. Some things are hard to fact check. Um, just because of the nature of the, you know, news that's coming out of that area. Mm -hmm. But I also encourage people, one, to fact check me and two, to stay away from, you know, um, Instagram handles and TikToks and Muslim and Jewish influencers um, or private citizens who are sharing their thoughts and opinions because I see a lot of comments on social media that are not based on fact, they're based on an emotion. Mm -hmm. And that is not, you know, that's not the truth and, and or maybe not the full truth. So right. the facts that I'm presenting here, I have citations for, I have all the facts uh, ready to go. But if I, if something doesn't sound right to you, I encourage everybody to fact check. 
um, and then reach out, right? But don't come to me and say you saw something on TikTok um, because that is now fact checking, guys. Yes. All right, so I'm going to start us off. Uh, we're going to go back into ancient times and talk about whose land is this, right? Who was there first? Because that is the, the problem of this whole dispute, right? Right, um, so specify what, what land and locations we're talking about here. Uh, so we're talking about Israel, Gaza, and West Bank. Okay. And Gaza and West Bank are a very disputed areas. Israel, maybe not so much in the recent years because they got some international recognition as a state and as a country, but Palestine did not they are still living under uh, Israeli regime, if you will. Um, they don't have the same rights and there is a lot of conflict going over there. And uh, the reason why I decided to, to, you know, take you back all the way to, you know, a few thousand years ago is because I've seen a lot of comments on social media just claiming things that are not right and they're not true they're not um, historically lot, accurate basically not like not even close uh you know people were saying that jewish people moved in into today modern day israel and took over the land uh which just factually is not true you can fact check this all day but those are the facts right and so uh that was the main reason why i decided to speak about you know okay well who was there first and then how did we get here so First, I'm going to tell you that, you know, Jerusalem, um, which is the holy land of the Jewish people, is one of the oldest cities in the world. And Israel is an ancient and holy land to the Jewish people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that area, you know, was founded over 5,000 years ago. They're one of the oldest people living there, um, you know, modern day Israelis are descendants of Israelites uh, who occupied Jerusalem, Jerusalem area over uh, 1,000 years BC. Mm. And Judaism, which is a religion, is uh, one of the oldest religions in the world and originated um, approximately um, in year 1800 BC, right? So a very long time ago. And the region in general went through a lot. I would say it is probably one of the most conquered lands in the world just because it is very strategically placed in the Middle East. Uh, it is sitting right on the Mediterranean Ocean, I mean, Mediterranean Sea, I'm sorry. And it provides you a really quick access to Asia, Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. Mm. So naturally, you know, all these empires just kept coming in there and trying to conquer it. And okay. I mean, every single empire that you can think of, right? The ancient Egypt, uh, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, um, Hellenic, uh, right? Your Greeks, your Romans, the Byzantine, um, and then, you know, My the people Ottoman got in there. Yeah, everybody wanted uh, to conquer that uh, land because it is a huge you know, military and just strategically well-placed uh, region. But one very important fact, and it's very hard to see this on social media, that's why I say please use reputable sources, you know, to, to fact check stuff that you see on social media, is that during all these um, empires that were, you know, coming through this area, they were expelling Israelis out of their land and eventually the israelis left they were left for europe and they left their land the people that moved in into this area you know came from all sides from all these um empires however during the early 1600s when islam was established as a religion they were Arabizing that area. And that's why the modern day Palestinians are majority Muslim. However, the, the simple fact that I said that, you know, Israelis lived there 5,000 years ago gives them the priority to claim the land because it was theirs, but they had to leave. However, 
when the Ottoman Empire left, the British Empire came, right? It always starts with the British. <laughs> they were pretty much handed the land after the World War II and were told that they have to fix the issue, right? In what way? What do you mean? The Palestinians wanted their own land because, you know, since the Jewish people left, now the Palestinians were living in that area. And, but it didn't change anything for them, right? Because all these empires and rulers were coming in and conquering the land. So Mm -hmm. they never got to establish their own country. Okay. And that is what they wanted. However, Zionist movement came about in the late 1800s. And you probably see this and on social media now and in the you know news outlets saying that you know zionism is behind this and so i feel like people don't even know what zionism is no i have and no idea no, they, i don't know if i've you know, even heard of it a that. lot of comments that i've seen you know they were calling zionists fascist which is 100% not true zionism is a movement that started you know in late 1800s where the jewish community started expressing a desire i'm very like i'm oversimplifying this um but they expressed the desire to establish their own country right to go back to israel and claim their holy land back and you know because until then jewish person if you claim that you're jewish it was almost like a ethnic group right because they didn't have a place where they were coming from they were you know all over the world Mm -hmm. so it was more like an ethnic group but that zionism really brought that desire that they established their own country and so the england they finally granted them that wish after the world war ii when the u.n council told uk that they have to find a solution for this area right And the UK thought that the solution is going to be what you also will see in the news today. It's called a two-state solution, right? An Arab state and an Israeli state or a Jewish state. Because Palestinians have already been there, they can keep a portion of the land. And then the Brits are going to give a portion to the Jewish people to establish their own state. Okay. The Jewish people were fine with that. However... The Palestinians were not. And I understand why, right? They were already there for hundreds of years, and now these people were coming and pretty much claiming a territory that, you know, Palestinians were already settled. And so right, I Right, but without, without the consideration of what has happened previous to that. Absolutely. You know, that settlement. And that is really what, you know, brings you to the conflict that, that you have going on today in that area. Because... Jewish people were very happy that they can come back to Israel and claim the land and establish their own independent state. So they took whatever UK was giving them. However, the Palestinians or Arab countries around them were not happy about that. And so in 1948, Israelis started settling in um, the land that the British Uh, government gave them but the conflict erupted right so israel is really surrounded by all arab countries they're surrounded by lebanon uh, which has a a huge uh, terrorist population over there called hezbollah that is currently funding hamas to fight the war uh, that is happening currently in gaza they have jordan they you know, they were also largely Muslim, and so they didn't want these Jewish people settling in, you know, in that area. They were fearing uh, conflict. They didn't want them there. They didn't know if Jewish people are going to, you know, try to take more land, try to expel them from, you know, Gaza and West Bank. Um, so, you know, they, they just didn't want Jewish people there. So the conflict erupted. There was a war that started in uh, 1948 and it lasted, I think, for about a year. And since then, they really didn't stop having conflict in that area. And this war uh, was de- it was just between the Palestinians and the Israelis. So 
a couple of other actors um, were included in this, including uh, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Ah, okay. Uh, so, you know, all the Muslim countries surrounding mm. Israel were Got fighting on, on the side of Palestinians. Okay. I have seen videos on LinkedIn, uh, no less, that was claiming that when the Jewish people came and settled in the in the area that the British government gave them, it was, you know, all desert and that they built it up from nothing. And that is only partially true. Um, but Israel did do something that Palestinians did not do. Because of the Zionist movement, they invited Jewish people all around the world to come and settle in Israel. So their population just disproportionately grew over a 20 year period, mm -hmm. okay? So when they first settled in 1948 in that area, they had less than a million people. However, they currently have over 9 million people. Wow. So not only were they inviting people to come back, you know, and claim their citizenship and claim their land, but they invested, you know, in infrastructure and military. They have one of the, you know, most sophisticated militaries in the world. And really? Yes, and they invested a lot, you know, into education. So they just used their money that they received from international community for different things. Or, you know, they explore different avenues. While the they Arab use it for growth, though. That's what it sounds like, not aggression. Yes, and that is what is you know, uh, at the center of the dispute that is happening right now in the attacks. So Israel was trying to grow and kind of make a name for itself, right? Become internationally recognized, and they did. However, Gaza and West Bank, um, which are the areas where um, all the Palestinians live, they had larger conflicts. They were afraid and, you know, they kept having this fear that um, Israelis are going to take over their land, which are probably not, you know, unfounded fears to have because now you have this extra group of people living here, you know, that doesn't support your views and goals um, and is also claiming your holy land because the... Palestinians are claiming Jerusalem and part or part of Jerusalem and Gaza as their holy land, which is yes, partially true. Like I said, you know, Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the world and it is a, a huge holy uh, land for not just Jews, but also for Christians, right? Yeah. Um, however, during the Arabization um, of Palestine, there are reports that Prophet Muhammad walked, uh, uh, you know, on that land, that he visited Gaza twice. So that's a huge thing, right, for, for the Muslim community. So they um, consider Gaza their holy land. They built mosques over there, you know, since the 600s. Um, so, yes, that is also their holy land. You know, but, I could understand why they are so defensive and why they're so passionate about it because this is their home this is all they absolutely. know you know uh, yes absolutely and uh you know it doesn't help that israel invested um that much money into their military and their defense um and they became uh, a big united states ally uh, we fund their military in billions every year we are why, helping them. Why? Can I ask you why? I wish I had a very simple answer for that, but I'm going to try to simplify this. Israel is our ally because they are surrounded by Islamic State. Okay. So the U.S. has a lot of conflict, as we know, in the Middle East. 
we have been you know fighting for 20 years uh, global war on terrorism and we had troops deployed all over middle east you know syria yemen afghanistan iraq jordan you name it right we were there um arabic countries um do not like us um and iran is one of our biggest enemies so to have a partnership with israel means a lot to the u.s foreign interests right get it because you're painting the picture i'm i'm getting it yep <laughs> so there is always a reason why we invest money into other countries okay mm -hmm. it's because you know it's not only for military purposes of course it's you know for diplomatic purposes uh but there is a lot of you know defense is a huge thing for the u.s and when you have enemies such as iran north korea and russia who invest a lot of money into their own defense system then the u.s has to counter that mm -hmm. and so they established this relationship with israel and invested a lot of, a lot of money into their country and their military and you know we have a lot of partnership going on with them mm -hmm. um and so we mutually support each other but because of that um, palestine does not see us as being friendly and for a good reason right so we started off by saying that you know the attack that happened on saturday um October 7th was perpetrated by Hamas and I mentioned that they're a terrorist organization. They are a ruling party in Palestine. I cannot stress this enough, okay? The people elected Hamas over a normal political party. They elected that, Okay, that blows my mind and I do not understand it. So maybe you can try to help me understand it because I don't understand why people would want to live under people who are so I mean aggressive. They rule by terror. I don't get it, Alex. I feel like the U.S. has been trying to answer that question for decades at this point as we have been fighting, you know, Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Hezbollah and all these other terrorist organizations. Um, but I can give you a few insights into why, you know, Palestinians would elect Hamas. And one of those reasons is exactly what we talked about, is the fear of a regular government not doing enough to prevent Israeli government from, you know, taking over Palestine. Oh my God. Israel has historically been less violent towards Palestinians than Palest Palestine towards Israel. And in a lot of times when there was a conflict, Israel was the one that either didn't start it or tried to solve it and you know they left the area uh, tried to give the land back to them but the conflict still persisted and i think it's that instilled fear of palestinian people that they just do not want jewish people there period they don't want them in israel they don't want jewish people to be in the middle east they don't want them to exist oh, and um palestine and Gaza specifically is a very poor area, okay? I don't know if you've seen a map, you know, since now that's all you pretty much you can see in the news, but the Gaza area is only about 146 square miles and it has over 2 million people living there. It is... I don't know why people would want to live there because they don't have means to leave israeli government is controlling a lot of that area so they're not allowed to leave um and that all has to do with hamas okay uh, so hamas was established in 1987 and they really were established to fight israelis and their whole principle is you know to eradicate Jewish people from Israel. Oh 
feel like it's very easy to manipulate, you know, poor and, you know, underserved communities um, when you're ruling with fear. Hamas is a ruling party in uh, Palestine. However, they are not doing anything good to Palestinian people. They have been using, you know, innocent civilians literally as human shields um, to save themselves. And, you know, innocent civilians got killed from Israeli attacks because Hamas didn't protect them. Hamas does not have the ability or enough military power to fight off Israel. So there is a lot of speculation of why they did what they did. Yeah, like what prompted right. that? I think they were looking for the world wanting to recognize what is happening over there. They were looking for, you know, um, their own recognition. They were looking to incite violence in the area and against um, Jewish people around the globe, as we've seen. It's happening in the U.S. as well. Um, and just to create chaos, okay? But it also showed that they really do not care about their own people. Yeah, they have no humanity at all. But I think they did not anticipate what kind of response they're going to receive from the world leaders, including the U.S., right? Because the U.S. is a huge ally of Israel. But how, then, how do you ignore that, you know, from their point of view? I mean, it's a domino effect. You, you um, go after one of, you know, our allies. We have no choice but to step in. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, if it was... If it was a legitimate government and legitimate military going against another military, I feel like the world would respond differently. However, Hamas is largely backed by Iran. Do you um, think that Iran would get involved? Yes, I I do. And I feel like the U.S. is, you know, bracing for that. I was listening today to Secretary of State Blinken and they were talking about that, you know, that that their U.S. is ramping up their support for Israel because they feared that Israel and Lebanon, um, which is a home of Hezbollah, another terrorist organization, that they will get involved. Hezbollah is already heavily involved into the fight they have been fighting on the border uh for days now and but hezbollah is funded by iran as well so that is you know the issue that we have at hand that's why the u.s you know initially sent um uh, a navy carrier um to the mediterranean sea and then we sent a marine detachment over there and now we're sending you know we're positioning more um carriers into that area and you know, Israel told us that they don't want U.S. forces on the ground because this is not a U.S. war. And I absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, Israel wants to fight their own fight. But the U.S. has to do, you know, what they have to do in order to protect right. their own assets. Right. So that's why we're, you know, positioning ourselves in that area in case a larger conflict erupts. So it doesn't sound so okay. So they, you know, they they do the initial attack, right? Now they have the wrath of Israel on them, right? And they're they're just bombing them and bombing them. Um, it doesn't seem like an even fight right now. So I don't understand where it could go from here. I am very glad you mentioned that because um, I talked a lot. You know how a lot of the stuff that is happening is Palestinian fault, uh, which, it, you know, it's, it's not disputable, but Israel is, is equally guilty, and especially for the recent attack. Okay, so yes, the attack that happened a few weeks ago, it was a terrorist attack, attack um, and Israel responded by proclaiming war on Hamas and they said that they're going to eradicate Hamas which you know initially when you hear that you're like okay well you know they're gonna defend themselves because they just 
got yeah. you know more than thousand of their you know citizens killed unprovoked right it was not a right. military attack like they killed literally civilians absolutely also they like beheaded babies yeah and that is so heavy side note this is why I don't read the news, and this is why I have you filter for me, but go I ahead. know. I am doing my best, uh, like, not to lose it right now. So, Israel responded, and rightfully so, um, and, you know, declared a war against Hamas. And initially, that was going well. However, uh, a few days after the attack, Israel send out a 24-hour notice to citizens living in Gaza and told them that they have to evacuate the area, which, okay, when you think about it, like, okay, well, you know, at least they give them a notice because they're about to bomb the area because they want to kill the terrorists that are, you know, sticking out over there. Uh, but I told you that, one, Gaza is a very small and one of the most congested, you know, places in the world and but it's also very poor and they're locked from all the sides right um israeli controls all of their entries uh besides uh one i think it's called rafa it's bordering with egypt but that one was closed as well so and didn't Gaza, Egypt didn't Egypt say they weren't accepting refugees? They so nobody wants to accept refugees, and that is you know currently what is happening. Really, what is happening over there is a humanitarian crisis. You know because uh, you know Palestinians have nowhere to go; oh. they're locked from all sides. Uh, Jordan said that they cannot take them. Um, rightfully so. Jordan has like one of the largest refugee camps. I have actually been there. They're barely supporting that. So they cannot receive. They just can't do it. Exactly. And, you know, nobody wants to deal with these refugees because that they have to house them. They have to feed them. They have to provide jobs for them. And some of these, you know, countries' economies just cannot support that. So they really didn't have where to go. So they were told to flee to the south of the border. And, you know, many of them did. But they displaced you know one and a half million people because they were planning this attack on gaza and since you know they launched they were launching air attacks pretty much every day um, but some people didn't leave the area so there is the numbers are disputed um, because you know hamas is the one that it's claiming victims so i would take it with a grain of salt um i'm not diminishing you know lives or anything but i'm just saying that i saw today was um you know over seven seven thousand uh, palestinians were killed since this conflict started a few weeks ago mm -hmm. you know those are innocent civilians their children their you know um, young adults uh families um you know they have nothing to do with this conflict but unfortunately, they were killed in airstrikes. But, but, okay, so let me ask you this. Did they support Hamas, though? So by association, got themselves involved in this? So that's why I said it's very disputable because we don't really know who stayed, right? Yeah, and I mean, I'm just asking questions. I mean, as they pop up, I'm not trying no, to absolutely. And bl that's blame uh, uh, you know um you know they certainly are victims in this as well i, I don't want to take away from that but i mean there's also i there's questions that i have to ask because they're also you know you had mentioned that you know they wanted hamas they chose hamas as a government i mean obviously not everyone it's you can't just blanket that but you know part of me has to wonder that Absolutely. And that's a valid question. And people have been asking that, you know, who is counting casualties? Is Hamas being honest about, you know, how they're reporting or are they reporting their own people as, you know, casualties mm -hmm. or, or are they inflating the numbers? There was also an article that came out um, 
last week, I believe. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but there was a bombing of the hospital. Yes, I did. And, and there was questionable, like, where it came from. Exactly. Like, was it Hamas? Was it Israel? And then Israel said, no, it wasn't them. They released an audio and a video, you know, and Hamas initially claimed that it was Israel and that they killed 700 people in the hospital. But ho however, when Israel released the video, it was they bombed a parking lot next to the hospital. And, the, oh. you know, it was only like few casualties. So that's why I said, you know, the numbers are inflated, but we don't have th that information because the nature of how we're reporting this, right? Because a lot of emotions are involved, but also a terrorist organization is involved. Like, I want people to remember that we cannot trust them but i also say we cannot trust israeli government as well because they're trying to minimize the impact the impact that they're having on people of gaza yeah so the situation is quite complicated and you know israel definitely didn't make this easier by you know launching this attack on gaza and displacing you know millions of civilians but this is just the nature of the world, right? Mm -hmm. They gave a notice to people to leave the area because they will, you know, launch an attack. However, before they did that, they cut off water, power, and fuel. So, yeah, so how is this, how are they even still surviving out there? So whatever they had within the city limits they are using and in the last few days there were you know some trucks coming in from the egypt uh, crossing into gaza to bring in the humanitarian aid however even president biden said you know the aid is not moving fast enough but it is not moving fast enough because they have to verify every single truck and every single item to make sure that you know there is uh, nothing that it's going to endanger endanger these civilians that the stuff that is going to go in is going to go actually to the civilians and not support Hamas that is why they're not allowing fuel but the fuel is you know what's running the hospitals right now oh, man. so today they said that they only have enough fuel to run it until tomorrow oh no so you know but Israel is saying that they do not want to allow fuel because that is what you know Hamas right. is going to use. Right, they're going so, to take it. Um, there's some aid coming, but not enough. So this is why I said, you know, this is a humanitarian crisis because innocent civilians are suffering because right. two sides are fighting over this disputed land. Right. So do you think the longer they go without this fuel... What, what what do you think could happen? What what do you think would happen the longer that we hold out on them from certain things like fuel? Um, I mean, how much longer can they fight like that? I honestly don't know. They built tunnels, underground tunnels, you know, illegal tunnels where they were smuggling stuff um, um. from Egypt and uh, Lebanon. Now, the problem is not, you know, that they were smuggling in food and, you know, medicine or whatever, but they were smuggling um, weapons and rockets that they used to launch, you know, attack on Israel. So the question really is, how is Iran going to react on this? And are they going to get more involved? Because they're definitely involved, you know, even if they're funding um, you know, they're not physically there, but they are definitely funding uh, Hamas. So the question really is, you know, is Israel, is Iran going to step up their support and in, in, a, in, a, in, in what way, you know, would, would that be in the form of troops? Would that be in the form of rockets? Would that be in, the, I mean, they're already sending the money. Yeah, any, I mean, all those things that you named is literally what the U.S. is anticipating that is going to happen. But if it wow. does happen, it is definitely going to spark a larger conflict in the area. Hamas is definitely guilty of the situation that is there, but uh, Israel is also guilty of, you know, creating a humanitarian crisis now in the region of Gaza. 
So let me ask you this. So let me ask you this. So best, let's say best case scenario. What is the, you know, I'm just shooting this out here. What is the best case scenario for this situation? I don't know. And I really think that they don't even know. So do you, do you think, is there a chance that Hamas will just concede and Hamas is probably not going to stop um, because they're violent in nature. Unfortunately, that is a reality for, you know, millions of people around the globe and especially in the Middle East. And, you know, Middle East is a home to a lot of terrorist organizations, unfortunately. And because of them, you know, innocent civilians who have nothing to do would that terrorist organization suffer? As we've seen, you know, in Afghanistan, since the Taliban took over, um, you know, women have no rights. They cannot get education. They have to abide very strict laws. Um, they cannot work. They cannot be seen, um, you know, with the men in public. There is just a lot of stuff that is happening there. And Iran is really the same, the same way. There is a lot of protests going on in iran because they're running such a strict you know terrorist country and so their they're... own people are upset with them Ob- yes. upset with their government a My majority God. of iranians do not want to be living under this regime but they are because they it's a dictatorship and they just you know don't have it's not a life a way out yeah. absolutely yes but you know that is that is the reality for these people and you know, there are protests going on in, in Iran for, for years now. Um, now, to answer your question, you know, what is the best, you know, case scenario for this? I would say for Israel would be to eradicate Hamas, which is, you know, that is what they declare that they're trying to do. And I personally think that they're trying to ruin Gaza infrastructure period right so there is nothing left so nobody can come back and that's devastating right because this is not this this is not going to impact hamas it's going to impact those civilians living in that area right and the best case scenario you know for hamas is obviously that israel is going to lose and that hamas is going to be able to take over that land and establish you know a independent state i just don't see that happening I, I don't see that happening, but I also don't see, um, you know, Hamas just, just giving up, just yes, just waving that white flag. Yeah, um, it's going to cost them everything. And it's like if if we can't have it, no one can, because that's what's going to happen. And yeah. it's sad because these people who aren't even fighting are losing their lives and being put in these horrific situations that they never, you know, did anything to bring that upon them, you know? The situation there is just devastating and unfortunately it's not going to turn out good for any of the civilians, you know, on both sides, you know, and the government essentially is just not going to care because that's really what you see in both of these cases, right? Palestinian leadership and Israeli leadership. Yeah. I mean, and so, you know, hearing all of this, it it definitely doesn't change for me, at least that there's innocent people dying on both sides. And I, I feel for all of them, you know, and, and I, you know, I wouldn't, I don't even know what to think about you know the future but it just it just hurt it, it's like heavy on my heart to even have this conversation but obviously like this is what we do you know i hope that we were able to just tell a story just now and find out some information and walk away from this as wow i learned something and you know it's something to, to really think about I, i'm a, i'm a class half full type of person and i keep trying to look and that's why I guess what that's why my question is you know what's the best case scenario because I'm hopeful I'm hopeful that they can come to a resolution with all of this but I, who knows we don't know you don't know yeah I mean I am in the military so my glasses always half empty I'm just, 
Do I get a pack a bag? <laughs> You're always the, like... the 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 brutally honest, brutally realistic one where I choose to live in hope and dreams. Uh, this is he's... why we get along well. Yes, we balance each other each out. Other. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope this wasn't too too heavy of a topic, but no topic goes unturned for us. Um, the next one has to be much lighter, Alex. We got to go yeah. and do something like we got to change our pace. For really, sure. really fluffy and really fun because innately that's who you and I are. Usually, our conversations are fun. We just make fun of each other. Uh, we make fun of the material. So we definitely owe ever anyone who's listening one of those topics. Yes, the next one for sure. Um, I don't know why are we sticking to these heavy topics, but I guess, you know, the, the state of the world. Because you can't of- ignore them, Alex. And this is the stuff that people don't ask the questions about or or maybe don't have all the information or don't know what information to listen to or to read about or to get overwhelmed with. Like, this is hard, but we have to do it, you know. Yes, Um, I I agree. Um, And, you know, as I said at the beginning, you know, try to stay away from social media, but try to stay informed because it is important to know what is happening in the world because it might, you know, end up affecting all of us. Right. You know, so no social media accounts that are not, you know, reputable news sources. Stick to, you know, uh, Associated Press, NPR, uh, BBC, The Guardian, you know, ABC News, something that is less biased. I know all of the news are, you know, pushing their own political agenda, but some of them are just less biased than the other. But those are the the news outlets that will verify and fact check the information before they publish. And if they do publish something wrong, they will, you know, issue a note, as we've seen um for the hospital attack, you know, a lot of news outlets issued, you know, that they pretty much uh, reported wrong. Uh, but that is what you're looking for, right? Somebody who is going to fact check their work. Um, you know, disconnect as well. I, I feel like that's something that I, I have to learn to do more because I get very consumed by what is happening. And last week, you know, I was um, doing my military time and it was actually very refreshing not to stare at my phone and read the news all the time because I did get a little triggered by all the pictures and, you know, the videos that I've seen of the conflict. It does take a mental toll. So recognize that you can still contribute, you know, one, by educating yourself on what is happening um, in Israel and Gaza, um, but two, you know, take care of, uh, um, of your mental state because that is important as well three listen to this podcast yes listen to this podcast we will try to stay unbiased um we tell you a story and what you do with that story is your your own on your own but we're here we're here for it we're here to talk about it fact check us too because you know we we might be wrong sometimes um love to hear it yeah absolutely any type of feedback we uh welcome it Yep. Questions, anything. And if you don't want to dive down that rabbit hole that Alex finds herself in, you know, feel free to ask her questions too, as well. Uh, We have our email, which is nyabpodcast at gmail.com. Of course, that stands for not your average breakdown podcast. Um, So please feel free to comment, send questions, let us know how we're doing. Um, you know, we're, we're only on episode two and we promise the lighter shit comes. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about our next topic, uh, in the next few days. It's probably going to be food knowing Alex. I support this. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and we enjoy what we do. So come back. Thank you for sticking with us. Bye everyone. Bye.